So if you don't already have the lesson or you're new to the church today, please touch the person to your left or to your right and they will send it to you so you can read along and build a conviction. Other than that, we are we are on 1 Peter chapter 2. Uh, if you just want to read it straight from the Come on, So today we are talking about building. And when I think of building, I think of this awesome staff retreat that uh, we went on back in Sydney. And in, at the staff retreat, it was me, Sean, and Emmanuel. This is a brother back in Sydney. And we were building in a way. We looked at this building because it was incredible. Uh, more so digging. Yes. But, oh, you know, true. it was cool enough to call it building, so we're going to call it building for this. Yeah. And we were, we were out on a beach. And for some reason, some of the sisters called out shark. It was a dolphin. So we had to come back get onto the beach. And we spent some time there. And for some reason, I thought, I thought of building a, ho- uh, building a hole. I'm just keep that building. Building a hole in the ground. <laughs> Soon after, Eman joined me and the hole got even bigger and greater. Then Sean came and that's when the real power came on in. <laughs> and that hole, oh my gosh, so glorious. <laughs> you, if you stood on the beach and just looked across the beach, you would even see us and we were standing. That's how deep the hole went. Wow. Didn't even see us. Wow. This hole was so awesome and so amazing. We, we, we even made some chairs all along the side. It was incredible. You could sit anywhere. But then we thought it would be a dumb idea to have a hole that you can't get out of. Uh-oh. So we started making some steps going up. <laughs> uh, and so we, we were able to come in and out. Unfortunately, the foundation of this hole was terrible. Uh, it was in sand, and so once you get low enough, the water starts coming up, and it starts yeah. messing up everything up. Yeah. As E-Man's digging, he's throwing the sand out, and I got lumps of wet sand smacking me in the face, going all over the place. Yeah. And it goes on, on the rest of the on the rest of the walls, and suddenly that there's crumbling now. Oh, no. Mm. no. Uh, eventually the sisters came in and they were like, oh hey, this is cool, let's sit down with you. They saw it was a manly hole and so they straight away went back out. <laughs> um, and from that point on, we didn't really know what we were doing because the water just got worse and the stairs weren't really suitable for walking up. Uh, so the foundation was terrible and our hole, uh, since we'll say we were, build, we were building it, let's just say the hole collapsed mm. in a way. It <laughs> fell down, the hole fell, that all fell up. <laughs> So right there was a bad foundation. Mm. I also think of another time, another another time when it comes to building. Have you ever done group work activities yeah. or team building activities? Yeah. There's one famous one. You have spaghetti and you have marshmallows. Mm. If you know me, you know I like sugar. So I'm not the best person to be with when it comes to that. Uh, whenever it comes to that, I always eat the marshmallows. And then you have less material, or bad material, or you have wet material because someone's got to uh, But it never works. It doesn't matter how good an idea someone has, it never works. Mm. The material is just bad. Mm. Terrible material does not make a good building. Come on. And the last when I think of building, I think of my brother. Yeah. When he was younger, you guys met my brother, he's 10, he probably makes better buildings now. Uh, not real life buildings, I mean building blocks. Yeah. But when he was young, he would build a house. The funny thing about this house was that there was no inside. He would build the blocks and it was pretty much just one big block that he had made. And he would call it a house. But there was no way of getting in because it's just a solid block. He didn't quite understand that you needed to go in the house and so it needed to be hollow. Uh, and so he just made a full on solid block. <laughs> and right there, sorry Joseph, is a bad builder. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about a spiritual building with, spiritual, with a spiritual foundation. Oh, we're going to be talking about building the kingdom of God right here. Come on. And so we're going to start in point number one, a building with spiritual stones. Mm. So if you want to open up your Bibles with me to 1 Peter chapter 2. And it says from verse 4. As you continue, as you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men but chosen by God, mm. and precious to them, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, "See, I lay a stone in Zion." a chosen and precious cornerstone. 
and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become a capstone and a stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes men fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what, which, which is also what they that were destined for. Christ is the living stone. We see that Jesus is the living stone and he was chosen by God. To be chosen by God is automatically guarantee, automatically guarantees a person to be precious. Mm, come on, Chris. I think of Murat. I am precious to Murari. When we look at Sean and Tegan, Tegan is precious to Sean. Come on. When we look at the sister's household, right now Jessica seems to be the most precious, uh, no, precious no, no. one because she brings out cheese platters. <laughs> <laughs> but they are precious to one another. Yeah. yeah. To Marari, Joyce is also precious. Mm -hmm. to, to Jordan, Jess Todd is also precious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To be chosen by someone is actually a great thing. Yeah. We, we see that when we recap back into 1 Peter chapter 1, and it's from verse 2 it says, Who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God, yeah. the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit. To be chosen also assures that there is a divine purpose. Mm. There's a purpose behind you being chosen. Come on, Chris. I've always been, I like now more than ever when it comes to playing basketball because I seem to get chosen a bit more. Mm. Uh, and that purpose is to win. Uh, I like picking Pascal on my team because I'm more likely to get hurt. So Pascal pu Pascal's purpose for that is to not hurt me right now. <laughs> Jesus was chosen to be a cornerstone for the building of God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. A cornerstone is pretty much is basically the first stone laid down when it yeah. comes to the building. Yep. Every other stone is placed according to how and where that cornerstone is. Mm -hmm. Jesus is precious to those who believe. In verse 6, there is a quote from Isaiah chapter 28, verse 16. It says, so this is what the Sovereign Lord says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a test, tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who trusts will never be dismayed. Trusting Jesus is the same as believing in Him. Although the word faith is used uh, in a variety of ways, in the New Testament is most commonly used to refer to trust, mm. trusting God. The one who trusts will never be put to shame. Mm. We cannot be ashamed of Jesus nor his work. Yeah. He was rejected, rejected by the would-be builders. Mm. There are actually people who would have been the builders. Mm. The Jewish leaders, with all their knowledge of the Old Testament, should have been prepared to accept Jesus the day he came. Wow. They should have. They had far more knowledge than what we ourselves had when we first came to, when we first came to believe, before yeah. we even came to believe. Picture it like this. Take all the knowledge you know now about Jesus, the Bible, and God. Maybe add a bit. They, were, they, were mm -hmm. pretty, they remember the scriptures off by heart. Add a lot more for me and for what right here. Now, imagine knowing all of that before you came to believe. Mm. That was them. They knew all of that. Mm. The only thing is they were not prepared. Wow. Wow. He was the stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to them. And so they were not prepared. Mm. In Romans chapter 9, the reason for their rejection and subsequent stumbling, stumbling was pursuing God by their own works. Mm. They wanted to work for a relationship with God. They relied on their performance, how well they performed, and they didn't have faith. Mm. There is actually a big lesson here, and I'm begging you guys, please don't miss it. In Matthew chapter 21, God makes an application from, from this same quotation, that every person must either fall on the stone, mm -hmm. in brokenness and vulnerability, mm -hmm. or the stone will fall on him, yeah. thereby crushing him. Wow. Mm -hmm. It is a person's pride that actually has them in this position. Mm -hmm. It's a person's pride 
a refusal to trust in Jesus and not your own strength. To be broken, to accept that you cannot do it, you need Christ. Yeah. Have you guys ever met someone so proud that they don't want to ask for help? <laughs> they are so proud that when you offer them help, it's almost as though you've insulted them. <laughs> the look of shame comes across their face, almost to say, do you even know what you're talking about? Mm. Do you know who I am? Well, this was once me, a long time, very long time. <laughs> when I started going to the gym, this was me. Now, I was sharing uh, what we call a, I don't know the proper name for it, but it's like a squat rack. So uh, usually people will squat on it and it's got hooks on either side. So if you twist it, it hooks on and the bar stays where it is. Unhook it, it, it goes lower and so on. And I was sharing this with a stranger, someone I didn't quite know. And we were using it for a chest press. So we had a bench underneath it. We would lay on it, and this is a bench press. You push the weight off your chest. Mm. And in my head, I started competing with the guy. Mm -hmm. I don't know him, and I just started competing with him, and I was new to the gym. Oh. <laughs> so the time came. A time came when I was like, you know, I'm gonna put more on, and I started adding more and more and more. His face was so shocked. <laughs> even got to the point where I was even sure I could do this. <laughs> <laughs> if he was to, to, uh, to offer me some help, I'd be like, no, I can do this. I didn't even know if I could do this. At one point, just as I started my set, I wasn't very sure if I could actually do this. As I said, he walked away. Um, my first rep was my last rep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he had earphones in and um, I was laying there and I, was, and I put brought the weight down and I was trying to push it back up again. It just wasn't moving. In the corner of my eye, I see him. And I'm like, should I, should I ask for help? I can't hold this any longer. Mm. At one point, I cried out, help. <laughs> the door came. And so I tried my hardest to get it uh, to, to the first little hook that supports it. Uh, it took some time, but I got it there. But it wasn't very high off my chest. Uh, it was about that much. And when you're breathing in or laying down, your, your gut sucked in. Uh, I'm not breathing in anymore, though I am laying down, so I had to kind of wiggle out, uh, and it was very embarrassing. Yeah. Believe me, I felt a lot of shame after not trusting in his own help. When we trust in what God has set us up for, we no longer have to trust in what we can do. Come on, Chris. Mm -hmm. And from my own experience, there's little to nothing that I can actually do compared to what God has already done for me. Yeah. Jesus, want, Jesus actually warned the people about this also. In Matthew 21, verse 30, uh, 43, it says, Therefore I tell you, that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you, and given to a people who will produce its fruit. He who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces, but the one whom it falls on will be crushed. They were destined to stumble, because they did not want it. They didn't accept humility. Pride predetermines your destiny, even when you think you're going the right way. Come on, Chris. Their destiny was not to disbelieve, but to stumble because of their because of a refusal to believe and to be saved by someone else and not themselves. Mm. The nature of the plan of God predetermines that some will believe and some will disbelieve. It is the same plan for everyone. Everyone is living the same plan and has the same plan. But many people just have different hearts. Christians are also a living stone. A living stone for the same building. The spiritual house, of course, is the church. This is the spiritual house. Come on, Chris. For in Matthew chapter 16, it says, And I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Jesus promised to build his church mm. on the rock. Mm. And that is himself. As the son of God in the flesh. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19 it says subsequently. You are no longer foreigners and aliens. But fellow citizens with God's people. And members of God's household. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together 
and raise us to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in Him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by His Spirit. The same illustration with some interesting additions. We are living stones. Come on. Living implies that disciples are active and excited as a result of being the very family of God. Yeah. That's something to be fired up about. Come on. Yes. That's something to be lit up about. If you're like that, you're get lit about it. Get it. Huh? <laughs> the life we are living is what will determine the kingdom we are building. Uh, yeah. Which kingdom we are building. We are either building a kingdom here on earth for ourselves or we are building God's kingdom. Amen. Stones are plural. You know, without each other, there is no building. Mm. Yeah. There is nothing to be built. Independence from one another is not even and it's not even possible in the building of God. How many of you here are looking for help from the person next to you? Come on. A brick on its own can be kicked, crushed, thrown, and broken. But have you ever tried to kick or punch a wall? <coughs> Doesn't work. Does not work if you try to punch a wall. Together, when we are tightly glued together and molded and shaped together, we make the kingdom of God. Yeah. Remember, you are either building your own kingdom here on earth, or you are building a kingdom that is both on earth and in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. How do you know which one you're building? Well, ask yourself, what kind of life are you living? Mm. What life are you living? Is it a life that is led by Christ, or a life that is led by your wants, and your worries. Your oh, worries can be your Come on. Yeah. Are you receiving help from the people around you? And are you giving help? Mm. When was the last time you prayed with the person to your left? When was the last time you prayed with the person to your right or in front or behind you? Mm. When was the last time you prayed with these people? Are you really tightly connected to those people? My best week one of my best weeks so far in this year has been a week when I've been able to pray with a brother each day. Mm. And that's been a, that is an incredible week. And at the end of the week, I was, I was able to pray with my wife. That was my best kind of week. And guys, don't even get me started on the whole night prayer. Oh, oh, yes. Yes. That was an awesome night, was yeah. it not? Yeah. A night of prayer to pray with your brothers and your sisters, to pray together. That was incredible. Yeah. Me and Tyrone got lost in prayer at one point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I am so thankful for Pascal because if it wasn't for him, I would have knocked out. We are, we are a holy priesthood for the purpose of offering spiritual sacrifices to God. Mm. Our first sacrifice is that of our bodies. Mm. Our bodies are a sacrifice. Yeah. In Romans 12, 1 it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifices, as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual worship. Mm. The life you live is either pleasing to the world or pleasing to God. Come on, Chris. What is your body sacrifice pleasing? The world or God? Come on. Another is a sacrifice of praise. The fruit of your lips that confess his name. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 50, it says, Through Jesus. Therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Come on. Sharing your faith and spreading the good news about Jesus, your prayers, your songs, and even the day you call Jesus Lord. Mm. Financial giving is also described as a sacrifice. And then finally, Paul depicts the saving of souls as an offering acceptable to God also. In view of these sacrifices to be offered, what kind of priest have you been lately? Come on. What kingdom are you building? Are you living to build up the reputation of God's kingdom or your own kingdom? Are you sharing, talking, and proclaiming the glory of Jesus Christ 
and his kingdom or your own kingdom? Mm. Are you leading people to the pile of misplaced bricks and a messy attempt of the world building its own kingdom? Mm. Or are you drawing people to the life found in the wall built on a foundation of Christ? Come on, Chris. Yeah. Building God's kingdom is a way of life. Mm -hmm. It is how we are called to live. Yeah. Can you call yourself a builder and a brick? Wow. A builder that builds with spiritual bricks. Amen. Point number two, building with purpose. Okay. It says from verse 9, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness and into His wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Yeah. To declare the praises of God. Evangelism is at the very heart of, calling, of our calling. For we are stones in the building built on a stone. Whatever his purpose was, is our purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Well, guess what? You're here to seek and save the yeah. lost. Yeah. Jesus died to himself. Well, guess what? You've got to die to Come on. yourself. Come on, Chris. Our concern is that God is praised by more and more people. Mm. Did you know that Jesus didn't just give up his life when he died for you that day? Mm. He gave up an incredible home in heaven mm -hmm. to come here to come here and die for us he gave up his glory it says in John 17 verse 5 now father glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world even began wow. if Jesus was willing to leave a place of tremendous glory in order to declare the praise of God we as disciples surely must be willing to leave our comfort zones to do the same thing. Yeah. Come on. We are fully qualified for this lofty purpose. To remind you, the scripture points out that we are chosen. Royal priesthood, a priest's purpose in the Old Testament was to bring the people to God and God to the people, to bring them together. A holy nation in the Old Testament the, the nation was prepared and then used to bring Christ to the world. A holy purpose. Belonging to God. Like Jesus, our food is to do the will of God and to accomplish His work. Living light. Now that we have found our way out of the darkness, we have the obligation to help others find the path. Also, mm -hmm. received mercy. As beggars, we have been given bread. We now have the joy of sharing that bread of life to other beggars around us. Yeah. Cross starving. How comfortable are you? Do you feel fed and relaxed, or are you trying your hardest? To feed your workmates. Are you trying your hardest to feed with the bread of life to, your, to other students in your class? Mm -hmm. Are you trying your hardest to feed someone else the good news you have received? Mm -hmm. Point number three. A building which attracts. Have you guys ever seen a beautiful building? Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, Pascal and Sephora always have this argument. Uh, which, is which is bigger? The Sky Tower or the Eiffel Tower? Ooh. Now, usually when it comes to building, uh, they just throw random stuff up there. They throw your broomsticks, they throw all kinds of stuff up there, just to get it that bit taller. So yes, the Sky Tower is 8 meters taller than the Eiffel Tower. Wow! But I was talking to Marani and I said, which one is more attractive though? Mm. If I was in Paris, I'll visit the Eiffel Tower. I've been in New Zealand for some time. <laughs> I've not been to the Sky Tower just yet. You're too focused, bro. There we go, too focused. 
the a building that is attractive is a building that makes people want to go to it. Yeah. It doesn't matter how big it is. Come on, okay. In First Peter mm -hmm. chapter two, from verse eleven, it says, "Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires which you, which war against which war against your soul. Live such good live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong." They may see the good, see your good deeds, and glorify God on the day He visits us. Wow. Through your denial of sinful desires, we are aliens and strangers in this world. We're outcasts in this world. We're strangers to this world, and this actually puts us in a good place. This is a good, good company. Abstain from these desires. For there are two good reasons. The first one is your influence on the people around you. Our example can either attract people or push people away. Yeah. Your desire is doing one or your example is doing one or the other. Mm -hmm. The next is to protect our own souls. These desires wage war against our souls. Yeah. These desires actually want us to go to hell. Mm. However, Inviting sin may look good at times, but it is pure poison and must be avoided as though it is a plague. We must keep it away from us. Mm. Through living good lives with good deeds, such a life does not stop initial accusations of doing wrong. Such a life does, however, allow the possibility of eventually changing even when our persecutors, uh, even changing our persecutors and bringing them to glorify God. Yeah. I, like to, I like to think of how much just taught, lived a good life of good deeds. Now check out her brother. Oh. He's here and Sean's good news was that he wants to get baptized this Sunday. Oh. Come on, Rami. <laughs> we will never make the world happy. That there is for sure. We can never make the world happy. But our good deeds are enough to change the hearts in this world. Amen. And I think that there is enough. Point number four, coming to a close. Oh, yes. Building a foundation of submission. It says from verse 13, submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every authority or every authority instituted among men, whether to the king as the, as the supreme authority or the governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to command those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish men, living as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as servants of God. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the brothers, brotherhood of believers. Fear God, honor the king. Slaves submit, slaves, submit yourselves to your masters with all respect. Not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it is commendable if a man bears up under pain of unjust suffering, because he is conscious of God. But how is it? To your credit, if you receive a beating for doing wrong mm -hmm. and endure it. But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this, you are called because, uh, because Christ suffered for you. Leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found on his in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threat. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judged justly. Wow. He himself bore our sins in his body on that tree so that we might die to sin and live of full righteousness. For his wounds, you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Mm -hmm. A submission to civil authority. 
we need to submit to the authorities around us. The command, as with all commands for submission, is to submit yourself. To submit yourself, to put yourself under. It is a uh, vo uh, sorry, voluntary act mm -hmm. and cannot be forced. You cannot force submission. Yeah. Since it must be from the heart. In a day when little respect for authorities actually exists, the command is a timely one. The king, in this case, was none other than Nero. And if you don't know a lot about Nero, he framed, uh, he pinned the blame on, uh, on the Christians when there was a fire that took out um, 15, I believe 15 out of 17 states in Rome. Uh, he would go after Christians, he would cover them in tar, stick them on a pole to light up and put them on fire so they could light up his garden. It was a thing that people, uh, Christians will have both uh, their, all their limbs, their arms and their legs tied to a horse and that horse was forced to run. Even some apostles were actually died being dragged by a horse. Of course, Peter was not saying that we must obey in ways contrary to the law, contrary to the laws of God. For he was an example. An example of obeying God rather than men. For in Acts chapter 5 verse 29 it says, Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than men. But unless man's law clearly conflicts with God's law, we must submit in both action and in attitude. But freedom is not a reason to do whatever you want. That's just selfishness. But to do what we should. Proper, uh, show proper respect to everyone. We must pass both the prejudice test and the preference test. So no question is, who do you struggle to re respect? Mm -hmm. Who is it you struggle to respect? Love the brotherhood, both tests come into play again. Fear of God, at what times and in what places are you mm -hmm. weak in this area? Just to let you know, hey, the devil is going to use that, that area mm -hmm. in your life yeah. to pull you away from God. And honor the king. You know, to me as a British person, that there feels good right there. You're going to honor the queen right there. <laughs> submission to your masters. By way of application, this would be submission to your employers. Those who are working, you've got to submit no matter how hard your boss is. And you know, mm. T.Y. tells me a lot about his workplace. But T.Y. submits, which is an awesome thing. Mm. And that there is something God sees and commends. The challenge is to submit with all respect to those who are harsh. The issue centers around what we are and not what he or she is. It doesn't yeah. matter about them. Yeah. Endure unjust treatment is far more simple, is far more simply persevering. It is enduring with all respect because you are a disciple. Submission to God, this command to submit. To submit more, uh, is, are more than lofty ideas. They are perfect. They are perfectly lived out before us by Jesus Himself. Mm. When He was treated unjustly, He made no re retaliation of any kind, mm. and He could have. Mm. He surrendered, and no, no one judged Him justly apart from God. So, in that, to conclude, a building with spiritual stones. We need to build, we need to be the builders and the building blocks suited for God's kingdom. A building with purpose. We are suited and booted to give God glory, guys. Be encouraged by that. Mm -hmm. Come on. A building which attracts. We are called to live lives that make God's kingdom attractive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that awesome? The kingdom yeah. of God can look like the Eiffel Tower right there. <laughs> Point number four, the building, building a foundation of submission. We are called to live a level of submission that applies in every area of our lives. Mm. And with that, to God build the glory.